Hi, this is Tong Hyun. I'm I'm here to introduce to you my articles published so far. And each article has the new terms that I created. I will go through my articles in chronological order to explain the terms that I created. Uh, in the meantime, hopefully this video will be an invitation for you to be my article reader. Yeah. Here I give you novelistic archive. This is a term from my article entitled uh, Reading the Comfort Women in Cloud Atlas, a Comparative Approach, published in 2019. This term grasps the whole universe of my academic vision of literature in relation to the topics of colonialism and capitalism. Uh, the term novelistic archive, it argues how important reading the history in the novel and the historicity in the novelistic world is is tremendously significant in reading of our past, present, and it can even give us the vision for reading our future. To show how novels are archiving this world, uh, to demonstrate that example, I choose this novel, uh, The Contemporary Br British Science Fiction by David Mitchell's Cloud Atlas and the Painful History of Korean Comfort Women. I found an allegorical connection between these two narratives. In the conclusion of this article, I emphasize how significant the reader's role is because the reader is the one who stands in between these two incommensurate words uh, to be uh, more strongly connected. The painting archive, a real life origin. In terms of this concept, a real life origin, uh, there is a study of categorization of Korean comfort women paintings. I categorize them into two parts. Uh, firstly, testimonial, and secondly, abstract. Testimonial art depends more on historically uh, factual objective elements uh, in the paintings. And there's, a, uh, there's another group of paintings that I called abstract art. Uh, they are less objective, uh, but more subjective. In this abstract historicity, in these abstract arts, uh, we found uh, the concept of peace and re reconciliation. My next term is Tatsung uh, Tokol. The article is written in Korean. In English abstract, I translate this term Tatsung uh, Tokol to aesthetically realistic. It means uh, the Spinda Schiller novel Oscar Wilde's uh, The Picture of Dorian Gray. It contains multi layered social criticism that can reflect allegorical uh, discussion of British imper imperialism. The criticism of Hippocratic Finn de Schiele, uh, lifestyle of British upper class, and this conflict between 19th century uh, law and literature. I believe that Tatsung uh, Toko, this term, is another name of my novelistic archive or real life origin because uh, it, it shows how novels and art can function as a form of social critique. Now we're moving on to the dimension of poetry. Uh, the next terms are tragic lyricism uh, and tragic pastoral or tragic lyrical ballad from a suggestive discourse on YouTube videos, a comparative approach. Uh, these terms uh, represent uh, a unique genre of uh, col colonial poem discovered in Korean uh, poem Iuxa's Green Grapes. We call it Changpodo. It is a specific poetry genre that contains national allegory, how national misery was, was represented in this mystical, magical, and lovely, sweet, vivid diction of what I call tragic lyricism. Uh, this oxymoron function as a kind of style of colonial poem genre. This colonial issue continues in my in my term, colonial repetition. I read colonial repetition as uh, what I call uh, third world textual aesthetics. It is the study of Frederick Jameson in Korean context. Uh, I apply his theory to Korean poem, uh, Isang's Ogamdo. I discovered uh, this political signature in Crow's Eye View, uh, the colonial repetition in this rectangular structure. 
the colonial repetition is about the colonial structure. Uh, colonial repetition is the duplication of words, phrases, and sentences in the third world text. Uh, this is significant because this linguistic repetition serves to evince the representativeness of a personal narrative. Colonial repetition is the symptomatic performativity of a text. And in Ugamdo, this rectangular structure uh, produced by colonial repetition function as a political national allegory. In the conclusion of this article, you will see this painting. I show this painting of Yi Sang, uh, a self-portrait, uh, as an example of colonial modernism. I have a serial study of colonial repetition. It is called Colonial Vortex. Uh, colonial Vortex is the circular texture, texture uh, performativity produced by linguistic repetition that is shown in this article to be common uh, to the two selected texts, James Joyce and Encounter and Wang Big Wan's Losing the City. The very narrative of the circular performativity describes a personal misery of colonized. However, the image of confinement implies the sovereignty of national uh, collective allegorically. So colonial repetition and colonial vortex, they represent, uh, both of them represents the violence of confinement, and they also imply uh, ongoing uh, situational tragedy, so that these visual images produced by textual performativity contain the sense of space and sense of continuity, the connection between the past and present, even the future. So uh, uh, they represent and implies the continued ongoing uh, condition of uh, national misery uh, represented in a personal level. Lastly, it is about ontological affective realism. It is a genre study and uh, uh, here in this article, I read how Korean film, the genres of Musan, how it can be connected and suggested as an example of explaining affect theory. Well, I actually spent a lot of time and effort to create the structure of this format. Uh, this article begins the concept of time argued by uh, this French critique, Andrew Bazin, how uh, ancient Egyptian mummy making is similar to modern human activity uh, movie making. And in the body of this article, I explore the intertextual relation between Andrew Bazin's uh, the ontology of photographic image and Korean movie, uh, the journals of Musan. This article has an interesting comparison, I mean, such as, as you see on the screen uh, in its labor scene, um, in terms of artistic technique, uh, the scene is a link to the style of French Impressionism. Uh, and in terms of poverty and labor, uh, this Korean film is connected to the masterpieces of Van Gogh, uh, such as A Pair of Shoes uh, or a Potato Eater, or even to uh, the masterpiece of Millet, uh, the painting, The Sore. Most of uh, most of the terms could be created in this comparative imagination of the link between East and West. My terms work as a link of incommensurability. Uh, so some people might say, oh, I mean, for example, A and B, well, they're not going to be connected uh, ever. But I want to say that, no, they can be connected. Well, I can demonstrate it, uh, that connection in my article by creating these new terms. Uh, and my terms function as an interface that can connect the dimension of art and literature. I believe something we see and something we read are never separated. Uh, rather, they are strongly interrelated in our comparative mind. I try to argue this belief uh, in my discourse of what I call word literature in intertextuality or horizontal reading or combinational reading or symmetrical comparability. All these case studies in my articles collectively uh, would be called a kind of examples of uh, reader response theory. 
I presented various types of case studies, I believe. Uh, in broader sense, uh, it is all about uh, this one topic, uh, what is comparative reading. Here I give you my academic conviction. Comparative reading makes an affectively liter illiterate era uh, affectively fluid. Uh, this paragraph that I wrote in my recent article is summarizes uh, why I have been uh, so obsessed with this comparative study. I wrote, um, an affectively illiterate era has already begun for the world. The recent conflicts around the world also allow the recognition that humanity has entered the era of becoming illiterate of the other. In other words, people of different races, cultures, political orientations, and levels of wealth are increasingly refusing to read each other. This refusal of mutually reading each other triggers uh, much conflict. The linkage of East and West entails the significance of comparative readings that contain the imperative value of seeing uh, the existence of you rather than I to make this compassionately illiterate world affectively fluid so we can read each other again. Uh, well, uh, so that's it for today in this video and you have uh, questions and opinions and then you can leave them uh, in the boxes below and we'll see you soon. Bye.